Thank you for tuning in to UNI TV. I'm Sean Dangler. And I'm Margot Sturgis. Today we will be taking, talking about UNI homecoming activities for the homecoming kickoff to the football game. Right now, from the University of Northern Iowa, this is UNI TV News. This week was an important week for the University of Northern Iowa because it was homecoming. There was a buzz around campus with all the different events happening. There is one event which started it all. Monday evening, students took part in the homecoming kickoff and UNI's <laughs> TV's own Mackenzie Brophy was on the scene reporting. Thanks, Margo and Sean. This year's homecoming theme was Students by Day and Panthers by Night. Students came out clad in their superhero outfits to cheer on their fellow Panthers. This event was put on by the UNI Campus Activities Board and a lot of hard work was put in. Many campus organizations were represented, including the Panther Pacers. Pride Cry is an annual event in which student organizations change the words to popular songs to fit the homecoming theme. If I go crazy, then will you still call me a Panther fan? Step back, gonna come at you fast. We're heading straight to the dome soon as we get out of class. He claws, he screams, he's Wolverine. He fights like an animal. <laughs> TK models, TC wobbles, live life like a cat. You last Monday through Friday, yeah. There were also performances yeah. by the UNI Spirit Squad and the dance team. Each performer was required to be completely a cappella, include their campus organization name, and end with the UNI fight song. Fun. Thanks, Mackenzie. Homecoming is an important part of a college <coughs> experience. It is the time of year when the campus comes alive, and there is a great vibe on campus. The University of Northern Iowa has had homecoming traditions and practices for over 90 years. In 1920, when the first homecoming was held, the University of Northern Iowa football team, then known as the Iowa State Teachers College, defeated Parsons College to 14-0. Over the years, there's Every been year different during themes homecoming. for homecoming from 1926's The Spirit of 50 Years, which dealt with the 50th anniversary of the college, to 1971's theme, Kaleidoscope, and to this year's theme, Students by Day, Panthers by Night. The homecoming parade has also been a big part of the homecoming tradition. There have been big names who have been the grand marshals of the parade. In 1962, Iowa Governor Norman Irby was a grand marshal, and in 2001, current president Robert Koob grand marshaled the parade with former presidents J.W. Mocker, John Kamrick, and Constantine Curris. The history of homecoming has been vibrant throughout the University of Northern Iowa's history, and let's hope it continues to go strong. Traditions are a part of U an important part of UNI's homecoming. Each year, Panther students get involved with these traditions to further their college experience. A relatively young tradition is the Traditions Society Amazing Race. And more with this story is Avon Halgerson. Every year during homecoming, UNI's Tradition Society holds their Amazing Race. This year is their sixth annual competition. The race usually involves participation of more than 20 teams. These teams of five compete in an amazing race challenge across campus using pictures as clues to direct them to new locations. I met with Yoselin Aldape, who is president of the Tradition Society. And one of the main events that the Tradition Challenge puts on is the Amazing Race during Homecoming Year Year. This year it's our sixth annual one, and we always uh, kick it off at the Alumni House, and teams dress up in different costumes and complete about 10 to 15 traditions um, within that night by it's like the amazing race if you've ever seen the TV show. And uh, then they get awards first through third place, best dressed, best school spirit, and um, just a fun night for us to celebrate homecoming and to get a kickstart on our traditions. 
For more information, you can check out the UNI's Tradition webpage. This has been Avon Helgerson, signing off. Thanks, Avon. This is a great and fun way for students to become involved on campus. Last Friday night, the McLeod Center housed the annual homecoming pep rally. Students were fired up and ready to show their spirit, especially after an encouraging talk from UNI's president, Bill Rood. Here's Carly Baiza with more on the excitement. This year's homecoming pep rally featured several performances, including a routine by the UNI dance team, a spirit segment from the UNI cheerleaders, and a skit put on by the swimming and diving team. Three student organizations competed for the Pride Cry Crown, Norrin Hall, SAA and Cats, and Camp Adventure. SAA and Cats, and a close behind, Norrin Hall. The excitement of Pride Cry soon shifted to anticipation for the crowning of the 2014 homecoming king and queen. because I feel like I have a lot of Panther pride and I feel like I've put a lot of time into the university and I don't know, it just makes me really happy because I feel like I'm a really good representation of what a like, person with great Panther pride is. <laughs> um, all four of the other guys on the King Court were like stand-up dudes, they're all handsome, they're all very involved, so the competition was definitely hashtag fierce. Um, they're all really good people and just like me and Jacob, they're extremely well-deserving and they also are people that like emulate Panther pride every day. That wraps up an amazing homecoming pep rally. This has been Carly Beisel reporting for UNI TV. Thanks, Carly, for that spirited report. An exciting event took place on Wednesday of homecoming week. Hypnotist Paul Ramsey was at the Gallagher Blue Dorn to entertain and hypnotize students. UNI TV's Corey Noble has more on this interesting man and event. So my name is Paul Ramsey. I'm a professional hypnotist. Uh, I tour all over the United States. I tour nationally. I perform mostly for college crowds like you and I. Uh, I've been doing that since 2004. Uh, I hypnotize about 1,500 people a year, and I perform for between 10 and 12,000 people a year. So it's a cool job. I like it. Um, I've been, like I said, I've been doing it about a decade. Um, it's just a really fun job. It's, it's a very um, rewarding job. You get to have fun with people and you get to sort of educate people about hypnosis, help people understand hypnosis better. So uh, it's, it's really, it's fun and interesting in that way. You get to share it with people and see people have a different experience that they haven't had before, which is, uh, I think, a big part of college, right? You come to college to have new and different experiences. So yeah, I like it a lot. show because um, the other ones I've been to they normally don't hypnotize everybody all at once they give everybody a chance 
And I thought it was really cool how he did that because even though there were a lot of people who got hypnotized, he gave everybody the chance and then he like narrowed it down from there. And I liked that he did a lot of stuff in the audience first. And he, he did stuff I'd never seen before. Usually the hypnotists do the same thing over and over again. And I've been to a lot of them and he did stuff that I hadn't seen before, which was really cool. Like the voting system I really liked. That was awesome. Yeah, had a good time. People don't remember, but. An event like this is always exciting. Thanks for the story, Corey. Last Thursday, September 18th, the Mocker Union Ballroom was full of people who wanted to win. They all come together to play bingo. Paul Ochoa has more on this exciting experience. Night was held for homecoming week. It was Thursday night, September 18th at 7 p.m. Students filled the Mocker Union Ballroom. Many people won at bingo with great prizes at stake. Like an Xbox One or a 32 inch TV. The right, so Logan got a bingo. There was a giant chess board on the floor for students to play with. There was a DJ playing music. drinks that had you going back for more. It was a great night for fun and excitement. This is Paula Choa reporting for UNITV. Thanks Paul. Sounds like it was an enjoyable night. An important part of the University of Northern Iowa homecoming and the football game are the mascots, TC and TK. They provide vital in entertainment to fans throughout the football game. Their interaction brings happiness to the fans. TC and TK also participate in numerous homecoming activities. Whenever there is Panther spirit, TC and TK will be there. When the University of Northern Iowa was established as the Iowa State Normal School in 1876, there was no mascot. It was not until 1931 when the Iowa State Teachers College was referred to as the Purple Panthers in a game against Columbia College of Dubuque. Through the mid-1980s, the Panthers had a mascot who went to games, but it had no official name. After this, the Panther mascot was referred to as TC, which are initials for the cat. While TC did a great job with fans throughout his time as the single mascot of UNI, there was a need to bring in a second mascot to help with the entertaining the masses of Panther fans. TK, aka the kitten, was introduced at the 2010 homecoming to help alleviate the pressures of entertaining Panther fans. Together, TC and TK are inseparable duo who continue to provide great entertainment at sporting events and all other Panther activities. After a break, we'll talk about homecoming parade, tailgating, picnic, and Panther football game. College is an avenue for learning that can lead to successful job opportunities in the future. However, the education you need cannot be gained simply by going to class. Joining Cedar River Productions is the best way for you to get hands-on experience and one-on-one -on -one help with technology that will be crucial for your future. This is your chance to get ahead of other students by gaining knowledge about new technology. You'll be given all the opportunities to turn your ideas into reality and fine-tune your skills and abilities along the way. Make the most of your college experience. Become a member of Cedar River Productions. I am a future Panther. I am ready to transfer. I am building my skills. I am social networking. I am investing in my future. I am challenging my students. I am running my own business. I am you and I. I am you and I. You can be too. Visit IamUNI.net. Experience, the community, the chemistry, the expertise, the right fit, and all the opportunity in the world to create your masterpiece. Enjoy the university experience in perfect proportion. And because we teach how to learn, the students of UNI are well prepared to create a lifetime of masterpieces. 
Create your masterpiece. Experience the University of Northern Iowa. It's just, just right. right. It's the perfect size for me. When I took the tour, I just knew this was the place for me. I don't, I don't know. know. It, it just, just felt, felt right. right. My professors know me. There's so many academic choices. I could major in anything here. I got to do research with my professor my sophomore year. I haven't graduated yet, and I already have a job offer. I just got accepted into grad school. I feel, I feel confident. confident. I'm, I'm ready. ready. Discover the place, the thinking, the numbers, the canvas, and all the opportunity in the world to create your masterpiece. Learn how to learn at the University of Northern Iowa, and you'll learn you can create a lifetime of masterpieces. Create your masterpiece. Discover the University of Northern Iowa. Welcome back to UNI TV, where we bring you the coverage of what is happening around UNI's campus and here in the Cedar Valley. Here's a, here on this edition of UNI's Homecoming, we have talked about the history of UNI, UNI's homecoming history, and even seeing some of what amazing events that took place last week during UNI's homecoming. Last Saturday, the UNI homecoming parade was held for the first time in seven years. This was an event in which students and the alumni wanted to take place since it's been in cancellation since 2008. Nathan Grieve was on site to take a look at the homecoming parade. Tell us more, Nathan. Because it says the same. The Cedar Falls community braved the inclement weather on Saturday to attend the first UNI homecoming parade after a seven year hiatus. The parade began at the Gallagher Blue Dorn Performing Arts Center before wrapping around the entirety of the campus. The university golf carts provided a base for various student organization floats. The floats ranged from shows of school pride to complex masterpieces. After a seven-year wait, UNI students and the Cedar Falls community at large were more than ready to greet this homecoming tradition. For UNI TV, this has been Nathan Grieve. Thanks, Nathan. It is great to see this event up and running after seven years. Last Thursday, KULT and the campus radio station had their big reveal on the top of Mocker Union. With more on this story is UNITV's Anton Ryder. The university's radio station, 94.5 KULT, is under new management and full of new ideas. On September 17th, the station put on an unveiling party to show off their new logo, new look, new people, and most importantly, new style. They want to get out of the basement and into the outside world. They are offering to DJ any organization that would like it for free. They also plan on going to more events to promote themselves. They have redesigned the station with new equipment, a new lounge area, and a new mascot called the Green Man, and new permanent segments that include a segment for the LGBT community called Gadio, a segment called B-Sides that plays less known songs by popular artists and others. You can check them out on Facebook to learn more, Twitter to hear about upcoming events, and even follow the Green Man's Twitter for a good laugh. And of course, you can listen to him on 94.5 or online at live.uni.edu. For UNI TV, I'm Anton Ryder. Thanks, Anton. It sounds like bigger and better things are happening for KULT. The Campus Activity Board is a student-run event programming organization. Its purpose is to plan and execute a variety of successful events and reflective of the diverse interests and needs of the student body. In addition, CAB provides annual picnic during homecoming week. Many events take place on campus during homecoming, but this event was the tastiest. Margo Sturgis tells us more about the picnic. The UNI Homecoming Committee holds a free picnic every year near the Campanile Tower on campus. This year, they offered hot dogs and turkey burgers. I think the event was really successful. We had quite a good turnout. Um, we had some changes this year, so the line was running a lot smoother. I think a lot more people got a chance to get their food before they had to go to class. It takes more than just one group to get an event like the picnic running smoothly. Donnell over at the Department of Residence helped us out with getting the numbers settled and what we wanted to serve and how we were going to serve it. 
College students and faculty members enjoyed a beautiful day on campus, hanging out and eating their free food. The weather is great. We, we always have such a beautiful day for the picnic, so we're thankful for that. For UNI TV, I'm Margo Sturgis. Thanks, Margo. The homecoming committee was very excited about all the people who showed up. Now let's take a look into Panther Sports. Here's our sports anchor, Carver Terpstra. Thanks for joining us, Carver. Thanks for having me, Margo and Sean. Saturday, September 20th, marked UNI's home opener at the Unidome as well as UNI's homecoming. Many eager Panthers fans waited outside the game and tailgated, excited to see the Panthers in action as the team took on Northern Colorado. Though the morning brought about rain and clouds on the day of homecoming, the skies were cooler up in the afternoon, making for beautiful tailgating weather. The calm fall weather brought many people out to the parking lot by the domes as people made their way from the parade to the tailgate. Panther spirit was high among the sea of purple and yellow tailgaters as they enjoyed the great tailgating atmosphere and prepared to cheer the Panthers on to victory. Yeah, well, it's always nice to come back here for you and I's tailgating parties. It's just nice to come back to visit friends I haven't seen in a long time. And it's always just nice to support the Panthers in their spirit of great festivities. And I just got to say, go Panthers. What an exciting weekend it was for the Panthers athletic team. The Panthers fans made their way over from the tailgate to the Unidome for a 4 o'clock kickoff as 15,270 fans filled the Dome to cheer on the Panthers as they took on Northern Colorado. Paul Ochoa has more on this story. As the band ran out of the tunnels to play, People waited for their team to start the show. On the first possession of the game, the Panthers led an early 7-0 touchdown and never looked back. Their defense fought on the sixth man and the team responded. As the second half started, fans danced in the stands. and the football team kept dancing in the end zone. The Panthers would go on on a route, winning 46-7, ending the homecoming week on a high. This is Paula Chola reporting for UNI TV. 
Thanks, Paul. It's good to see the Panthers get back in form and pick up the convincing W. The football team will look to continue its winning formula from homecoming as they take on Tennessee Tech on Saturday, September 27th. Now, let's shift our attention to volleyball. The Panthers opened the season up with an invitation to the Marcia E. Hamilton Classic in St. Louis. The Panthers fell, though, in their first game of this season, losing by three sets to one to Alabama. They're able to bounce back and win their next consolidation games in the tourney. After St. Louis, it was off to Lexington, Kentucky for the Commonwealth Classic. The Panthers, however, did not fare well in this tournament, losing all three of their games. The Panthers open up home playing the McLeod with Tuss lost to Northern Illinois. The Panthers' next stop was South Bend, Indiana for the Shamrock Invitational. In the first game of the tourney, the Panthers came in on top, three sets to one against Northeastern. In their next game, they swept TCU on their way to the championship match. In the title match, the Panthers went up against the host team Notre Dame and were able to come out on top, three sets to one, to claim the Shamrock Invitational title. The Panthers used that title victory mo momentum to win their next two, which included a homecoming victory over Bradley. The men's and women's cross-country squads both opened up their season at the Bulldog Invitational in Des Moines at Drake University on Friday, August 29th. The Panthers placed just outside the top 10 for both men and women. The next stop for both teams was the Oz Memorial in Minneapolis. The, women's took, the women were able to take away the first place while the men placed third. Both teams were last in action at the Woody Greeno Invitational in Lincoln, Nebraska. The women placed fourth while the men placed fifth. Both squads will be in action next at the Notre Dame Invitational in South Bend on the 3rd of October. Well, that's it for sports. Let's take a break and we'll be back with Margot and Sean. College is an avenue for learning that can lead to successful job opportunities in the future. However, the education you need cannot be gained simply by going to class. Joining Cedar River Productions is the best way for you to get hands-on experience and one-on-one -on -one help with technology that will be crucial for your future. This is your chance to get ahead of other students by gaining knowledge about new technology. You'll be given all the opportunities to turn your ideas into reality and fine-tune your skills and abilities along the way. Make the most of your college experience. Become a member of Cedar River Productions. I am a future Panther. I am ready to transfer. I am building my skills. I am social networking. I am investing in my future. I am challenging my students. I am running my own business. I am you and I. I am you and I. You can be too. Visit IamUNI.net. Welcome back to an exciting edition of UNI TV, where we are recapping of the UNI Homecoming Week. To wrap this segment, let's talk about the ones who keep us on our feet during halftime. An important part of the University of Northern Iowa Panthers football game experience is not only watching the team, but also watching the Panther Marching Band perform at halftime. Last Saturday was the first time the Panther Marching Band was able to play in front of their home crowd. With being the pride of Panther Nation, this band is expected to excite fans during their halftime performances. This year, the band has 280 members. This is the largest in UNI history. The band is actually twice the size it was when director Danny Gallion took over the program in 2007. Besides the band playing at halftime games, they are going international this year. The Panther Marching Band will be playing in London in the London New Year's Day Parade on January 1, 2015. This is an exciting moment in Panther Marching Band history. This will give the members of the Marching Band an experience like none other. If you are interested in joining the Panther Marching Band, you do not need to worry. There are no auditions and you do not have to be a part of the music major. This sounds like a win-win for anyone who is interested. And be sure to go and see the Panther Marching Band perform at halftime of every football game. We hope you had an enjoyable homecoming week for Sean Dangler. And Margot Sturgis, this has been UNI TV. UNI TV is a weekly program produced by and for students. Thank you for watching and see you next week.
I am a future panther. I am ready to transfer. I am challenging my students. I am you and I. I am you and I. You can be too. Visit IamYouAndI.net.